Welcome to Soaps.com. I'm Kristen Burt. You know her as Belle Black Brady on Days of Our Lives, and she's had a whole lot of drama going on in Salem right now. So we are thrilled to welcome Martha Madison with us today. Martha, how are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, I I want to get into it, but we're going to start, um, we're going to go back first and then go work our way up to the present. But you have had a lot of drama going on the show right now. <laughs> yes, it's the, probably the most I've worked uh, all at once in a long time. Yeah. Well, you certainly haven't disappointed. I will tell you that much. So the, the, the storyline has been fantastic. And every day my, my mouth is just like dropping. My jaw is like, oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I want to go back first because I know that you have an anniversary coming up. You, almost two decades on Days of Our Lives. You debuted on August 10th, 2004. Oh my God. <laughs> I, it, it, it is. It, I, I, st I don't know if you're in a place where you still feel like 2004 was maybe eight to 10 years ago. Yes. It, it blows my mind. So I just had like the day that I got hired, I just had that anniversary, which was um, 18 years. And even my sister texted me. She was like, wait, what? That was 18 years ago. And I was like, yeah, we are super old. <laughs> Well, no, we're aging backwards, but we, I mean, it is funny that you, these moments were almost two decades ago. Do you remember what that first day was like, who the people were that were welcoming you into the fold? You know, I kind of took you by the arm and said, I'm going to show you the ropes here. Yes, it was a very, it's one of the most memorable days of my life, actually, because I had not been hired for this job after the screen test they hired a different actress and so when they called me to come to the studio that day I didn't know why and so because you know they had already hired Bell. <laughs> so um yeah when I got there the first person um like right when I walked into the hallway Stuart um uh, who was our stage manager, Stuart Howard, um, came and like grabbed me by the arm. He said, you're Martha, right? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, come with me. And he like whisked me away upstairs. And the executive producer essentially said, you know, we actually want you to be our Belle and, um, and you're going to shoot two episodes today. So here's your scripts. Don't panic. Go to hair and makeup. We'll have people helping you all along the way. And so that was my first day. <laughs> so I had shot my first two episodes before... I even called my mom. So, and yeah, I was supposed to work. I was working in a restaurant. I was supposed to work that night and I had to call them after and be like, yeah, I'm actually not coming to work. Hi, I, I got a role on um, Days of Our Lives. I mean, did they literally believe that or? or I mean, it it was, everyone was like, what? But, you know, I worked with a bunch of aspiring actors. And so everyone was really excited that one of us had, you know, gotten a job finally. <laughs> I have to ask because, I mean, I think about these things. Did your agent know? Had you signed the contract? Were you signing it? They, I mean, the ink wasn't even dry and you're on set at that point. No, my agent at the time, if she knew, she didn't tell me. She said, I just need your sizes. They've asked for your dress size. So um, I feel like maybe she knew, but she didn't say. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I they didn't have a contract. I didn't sign my contract until after like the next day, I think. But at the time when you screen tested, you've already negotiated the terms of your contract. So when you get hired, you just sign it. And so I did have that already done, but nothing had been signed until after I'd already shot the first two shows. Yeah. You at least had that deal memo in place. We love that. Yeah. But, but how did they lure you down to the studio? Were you thinking, oh, maybe I'm just getting, you know, a small role because they didn't like me and I screen tested? Yes, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, well, my screen test was actually pretty good. I felt really good about it. Um, so I thought, well, maybe they're just throwing me a bone, like, thank you for your time. Here's an under five. Someone didn't show up today or something like that. That's what I thought I was walking into. <laughs> so, I was, I, did it take you two to three days to actually sit there and process that you are Belle? Um, it's been 18 years. I'm still processing. <laughs> I Belle. It always, I always get those moments, especially like when you're on Soap Digest cover or something like that, where you're like, I cannot believe this is my life. Like, yeah, I don't think you fully ever get that confident, that comfortable, confident place where it's just like, 
totally normal all the time. So amazing. Uh, who were the people that that kind of welcomed you in? There's always cast members. I always call them like they're they're sort of like the mom of the set or the yeah. dad of the set. They're like, this is where you eat. Like yes. this is what happens if you want to hang out my dressing room. This is the person who has snacks. <laughs> who that for you? These are important things. I don't know if people yeah. realize this. There were a lot of um, sort of ambassadors there that day. Um, Stuart being one of them, safe manager at the time. Uh, Farrah Thath really, you know, she was the first person that I worked with. And so she was the first person like, I'm Farrah, I'm working with you today. She came over, ran lines, and then kind of gave me the lowdown on everything that had been happening up to that point. And, um, and uh, Heather Lindell, um, who, Heather Boyd now, she's married now, um, who plays Jan, she was um, also became one of my closest friends right away. So um, those two, and then of course, Deidre was you know, the mother, <laughs> she was, of course, if anyone messes with you, you come talk to me, <laughs> you know, uh, I got you, you know, and she's still very much, um, very, uh, feels like my, my TV mom. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's so wonderful too. And I, that was a really good, um, imitation of Deidre, by the way, I, I felt <laughs> like I could totally see her doing it and hearing her and everything else. Yeah. <laughs> she's, uh, she's always been a huge advocate of mine and, um, and I just love her. She's just a wonderful person. So good to hear. And, you know, the character, obviously you were stepping into a role that other actresses have played. Was there a point when you finally felt that the role was yours, um, that it was no longer Kirsten's or anyone else's who had been in that, who'd stepped in Belle's shoes? Hmm. No, <laughs> you know, I still don't think I've fully crossed that, that threshold. threshold. Um, I will say at the very beginning, when I very first stepped into the job, and because it happened so abruptly and so quickly, I didn't really give much thought to that at all. Um, it was just like, oh, this is my new job. And I didn't really think about it being anybody else's before mine, mainly because I just didn't have the bandwidth to do that. Yeah. So it took me a little while when I started to settle in and started to understand that there was going to be like fan feedback and stuff. Like I never even, that wasn't part of the equation in my mind. Right. Um, that's when I started to realize, oh, oh, okay. They're not like, I have to, I'm going to have to earn this. Like I'm going to have to work really hard for this. And so there was, there's been a lot of that over the years, you know, I have to imagine that you are grateful that you stepped into the role pre-social media when the feedback was is immediate now. It, yeah. Not having that opportunity to just kind of like, you know, dig in and get grounded and, and feel like who Belle is and so you're comfortable in her skin. Right. Getting a lot of feedback and noise from other people can be a lot. It can be intense. Yeah. I, I came in during the days of the message boards, you know, where, yes. um, you know, you would, you would hear whisperings of it. And then of course you'd click a link and you just never want to. Ever like, why did that. I do that? <laughs> no, I learned that right away. Like, don't, don't go down those rabbit holes. It's none of my business what these people think of me. Uh, I don't know them. And, you know, I had to kind of like do a lot of that talking to myself to like get myself grounded and really just focus on the work but you know now with social media <laughs> you always know what people are thinking so. you, do. you click notifications and you're like I I shouldn't have done that what was I thinking <laughs> yeah you know I'm a fan of the mute button so I just mute if anything I don't want to hear <laughs> same here how do you think Belle has changed in the 18 years you have played her where do you see her growth where do you see that she still needs to work on some things <laughs> She needs to work on a lot of things. A lot. Um, Especially as of late. I mean, I think when I initially took the role, Belle was still in a very, you know, she was very young and she didn't know a lot yet. She was, um, you know, just, I think my second day was when Belle lost her virginity. Like, you know, it was, she had, wasn't, you know, had two boyfriends and eventually two husbands and a baby. And of course, all the evolution that comes with that kind of human growth um, was, I, I feel like we brought to the character. But then I was, I left for seven years. The character was off the canvas for seven years. And so they had sort of carte blanche to do whatever they wanted. So when I came back, it felt like I was playing a very different character. It, you know, she was very... She was going through a divorce. She now had a teenage daughter. Um, you know, she had become a lawyer. I think when I left, uh, Belle was a nurse and I came back as an attorney. So, you know, she's like busy. From this really adorable, like fashion designer person to this, you know, whip smart, book smart, legal, you know, 
I don't know, uh, just such a great uh, attorney and um, maybe have a little bit more seriousness to her. Um, and, and I think that all came from when I originally came back in 2015. That's kind of how the writing felt to me. So that's kind of how I played it. Um, and now I feel like there's so much she needs to work on. <laughs> you know, she still got married really young. And I think that this serial cheating that is happening with her is certainly a sign of an underlying problem. Um, and uh, and I, I hope that in the coming months and maybe years that we explore that a little bit more. I'm going to imagine as an actor too, that this is, you've been able to see the growth and the changes and everything else. And of course the storyline changes, but um, you would then have to approach Belle from, from a different angle and from a different perspective as time goes on. And that I always think is the beauty of daytime when you have the opportunity to play a character over two decades. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, depending on what story they give you, you, uh, you have essentially that new data point to pull on whenever it's convenient in the future, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, I think that, for me, there, having that seven year gap leaves a lot of issues to be explored that we haven't really done. So I, I you know, I, I try to play her as a intelligent, dynamic woman as most women in their thirties and forties are, at least all the women I know. And so I really wanna bring that. I don't want her to be just a flat character, you know, so. Yeah, she is 3D and full of life because yeah. When we talk about what's happening in Salem right now, did you see this coming? Did you think the days would ever break up Shell? I mean, did we think that like Belle and Sean were going to be completely on the outs the way they are right now? No, you know, I mean, I think when they originally put these two together, it was there were the, the, the children of these two major super couples, it becomes like this almost soap royalty couple. And, um, and they, and it was amazing when they did that with, with the Jason and Kirsten who were playing them at the time, I think, um, you know, the comparison issue between Brandon and me and them was always an issue. Um, and I think that, People, some people started to say, well, maybe we'd rather see Belle with someone else, or maybe we'd rather see Sean with someone else. I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe this isn't the, the royal couple, you know, that they you know, so I think that um, it's been hard to get all of the fans in one basket. And so I think maybe they're trying to explore different avenues now. I don't know. Do you feel like this is a breakup that is permanent or because I always think you know a happy couple in daytime is not always what you want as an actor you want that drama because it keeps your storyline going because happy couple they go okay we'll just put you in the back burner for a little while totally so I actually had an executive producer say to me once Martha the the kiss of death in this business is being happy in a couple <laughs> like you want us to keep doing this and I'm like yeah 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 do it do it um so you know I'm very happy that they're breaking up Sean and Belle so that we can tell these other stories, but not because I, you know, don't love the couple or I don't love, you know, working with Brandon and I, that's absolutely not true. But I think for us to have continued story when these shows go on for decades and decades, you have to be willing to kind of try new things. And, um, and I feel really lucky that they decided to do that with us because for a long time, I feel like they were like, well, oh, we don't want to mess with Sean and Belle, Sean and Belle, you know, but then it really leaves nowhere for us to go as actors. So this has been really fun for all of us. We've all been like, yeah, 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 mess them up. Let's do it for more. <laughs> I don't know, isn't it funny? You would never want this in your own personal life. Right. When it comes to a scripted show, you're like, bring on the horrible traumatic drama please <laughs> right, that's what I meant and I did a recent interview where I was like you know this faction of fans is gonna really hate me and I'm like yeah bring it on you know <laughs> I don't mean it personally I just mean like that means that we're having some fun we're doing something you know you're hitting those buttons and you know and, and for some people they're gonna be with this storyline 100 and other people are right. like what are you doing you're ruining a legacy couple but at the same time everyone's having that water cooler talk on Twitter. And if you're having a passionate reaction, that's what we want. Whether it's this or that, it doesn't really matter. It just matters <laughs> that you're feeling something. I mean, that's the point of daytime, right? It, it is the point of daytime. And that's when you start bringing an EJ into the mix. And <laughs> right. um, how, do you think that, that EJ and Belle could get serious? 
I mean, I think there's always potential for that. I don't know. I, you know, that's uh, it's a little above my pay grade, so I don't make those decisions. But I certainly think we have shown that there is a there there. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and, and showing a there there, it makes me start spinning in my mind. Like, could there be a wedding? What would that look like? Is Sammy showing up to this? I mean, she has to be showing up. I mean, I can't imagine a, a wedding with EJ and Belle, first of all, at all. But if they did, Sammy would definitely be there, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because, you, I mean, you need them. I mean, to me, that is like a total sweeps storyline where like oh, yeah. Sammy shows up and the two of them were like, will they actually say their vows if, if we got to this point? <laughs> In Salem, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I love about Salem. It really isn't anything goes situation. You might die, but ten, five years later, you're back. <laughs> totally. Um, I, I want to know too, you know, the Demiras bring out something uh, very unique in Belle. Do you think that this is bringing out maybe the naughtier side of Belle? You know, the, the side that's not necessarily all wrapped up in her, her law, law degree and her corporate job. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, I think that Belle has spent a lot of her life being a people pleaser and being, you know, really type A. And I think um, this has been a really fun opportunity to explore some of her boundaries. You know, she's was drinking a lot and cheating and like getting in touch with more of her sexual side. And like, I would love to see more of that for sure. Because I think with any woman, it's all in there. It's all in there. You got to unleash the tiger once in a while. Absolutely. And, you know, doing it when someone's in their thirties, forties and continuing those storylines, even beyond that. Mm -hmm. So important because, so you important. know, we don't want to sit there and just say, ah, after 40 or after 50, none of that drama happens. It absolutely does. Yes. Yes. Amen, sister. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, you can't give away spoilers. We know that. But if you could get come up with maybe three adjectives of what fans can expect in the storyline coming up in the next few weeks and months. Oh, gosh. Three words. Um, well, there's a setup. Um, let's see, let's see, justice is always a word you would use with lawyer bell, mm -hmm. um, and love. I love it. Set up justice and love. We could spin that in 18 different directions. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Exactly. That's always what we have to do when it comes to what's happening on days. Um, do you like look back on your career where you've had this incredible career in daytime? Is there something that you'd love to go back and tell your 2004 self that that person that stepped onto the set and didn't know that they were about to, you know, embark on, you know, really a role of a lifetime? What would you like to tell yourself? Uh, I think the first thing I would say is, you know, don't take it too seriously. Have fun, you know. Um, and and with that, like, you know, don't be afraid. It's all going to work out. I think I was, um, you know, I had I put a lot of pressure on myself at the very beginning because I loved it so much and I wanted it to be perfect. And I think, um, you know, it's easy to look back in hindsight and be like, yeah, it was all good. You should have relaxed and enjoyed it a little bit more. So that's probably what I would say. Stay in the moment is always a good bit of advice because yeah. you get so caught up in the what ifs. You're like, you're missing the now. Totally. You are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. Breathing in. <laughs> it's, it's such great advice um and I also have to ask I, I noticed that your daughter Charlie is kind of exploring her her creative side oh my gosh doing a little acting has she been bitten by the acting bug if she has she won't admit it but what she said so I put her in a, a theater class at her request a little camp it was like six weeks and then they did a show Alice in Wonderland and she was very um she didn't like rehearsing so didn't want to be told that she had to rehearse, but she did it. Um, and then when she, right before she went up on stage, she was like, I don't think I can do this. I'm so nervous. Like she had real stage fright, which she's not afraid of anything. So it was really like, wow, she really, she has stage fright. But then when she got, she, of course she was perfect. She did a great job. And when she got down from the stage, she said, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'll do it again. <laughs> so like, interesting. Yeah. The yeah. whole time she's like, I'm never doing this again. Never, never. And now she's like, yeah, I might do this again. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. That's kind of interesting, though. That gives her the opportunity to give it a try. Say maybe, but yeah. maybe not. 
I honestly, I think music is more her thing. She's a really good singer. She's got great pitch. And so I'm just going to maybe go that route when she asks for it. So yeah, and that'll get her back on it. Yeah, she, she rides horses all week and that's her thing. She wants to be a competitive equestrian and that's really where her focus is now. And she's a kid. She gets to like explore all these different avenues. Yeah. Totally. I mean, I, I would never push it, but if she wants to do it, we're in a good place in LA here for her to do that. <laughs> That's right. You have all the best, like yeah. peers, teachers, you know, if she wants to get in commercial. She has anything she wants to do is right here in Los Angeles. I hope she doesn't. <laughs> if she wants to, we'll see. <laughs> I know you're the mom. You're like, don't do the acting career. Don't do it. You can be a doctor. <laughs> You can be a lawyer like Bill. And I know, right? Do it all. <laughs> well, Martha, it was an absolute pleasure talking with you. Congratulations on 18 years on days. We're so thrilled for you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. 